Hello, this is Richard with another tutorial. Uh, this time we're going to have a look at the world background and introduce some nice clouds. So with the dawn of the new um, cloud shader for the world background, I just downloaded uh, Blender 2.9, uh, which is in alpha mode right now in alpha stage. Uh, but it already here in cycles in the cycles renderer we can already choose the new sky texture uh, we see Hossick Wilkie is still there and I think Pretem was all also already available but Nishita seems to be the new one and if we change to the rendered view we see a very nice a very nice hazy world background but there are no clouds so how to make it dynamic with uh, thick clouds shaded by sunlight and moving in the wind I'm opening a second segment a second area uh, and load the shader view inside here and because we're not manipulating the shader of an object, but rather of the world background, I'm switching to world background. And here we already see the three nodes, which I implemented before. There is uh, the sky node. And in between the sky node and the background shader node, we're going to introduce uh, some more nodes, especially uh, some procedural texture, which will be responsible for the density of our clouds. Also, we have to manipulate the background coordinates. Um, right away, we can use the geometry node for that. I usually work with the normal of the world background. You can think of vectors pointing inwards to the center of the scene uh, and uh, the surface of the world background, of course, being a firmament, a, a huge sphere with a radius of infinity, uh, so that if you move the camera in your scene, you won't see movement of the background. However, uh, using the normal would come in handy. If we are going to use the components of this normal, then I would suggest to use a separate XY set plug the normal into the XY set and uh, we could use the set component to or the inverse of the set component to drive the scale of our texture because then right away we have some cloud texture let's just uh, look at the factor as color in the background you see that uh, already we have some pattern which seems flat like clouds on a plane and uh, to the horizon they are getting smaller and smaller and smaller which uh, introduces this impression of, of clouds on a plane of texture on a plane and of course if we want to uh, cover the sky with clouds then we have to color mix them so our clouds are the mix factor and let's say color one is the sky and in between we can tone map our uh, procedural texture in order to control the density so you see they're getting thicker now but this way we won't be able to move our clouds like in the wind or with camera movement therefore we have to do another trick in here we're not going to use uh, the division offset for the scale that means we're not using the inverse of how much does the normal vector look down in the global set axis but rather we are going to calculate um, a combination of components which resemble a flat plane and of course a combination of components for a flat plane would need an X and a Y coordinate and luckily we already have the division here 
So we are just going to use the division of y over z as well as the division of x over z. And there we go. This is our vector which we can use for our clouds. They resemble clouds or a noise texture on a plane. I can scale them up uh, to make it bigger. Uh, so I chose a scale of one. Um, I make more detail in them, detail of six. And now, since we have a distinct x-axis and a distinct y-axis, and there is nothing changing in the in the set coordinate, now we can uh, use, for example, a second noise texture to introduce some shading. Uh, how would I do that? Let's just double this node, Shift D. And uh, before I plug in the vector into this noise texture, I would add some wind with a vector math node in addition mode. Uh, vector one would be our original vector, which is also going in the first noise, and uh, the output of this node can go into our second noise. Something like this. And we want to manipulate this solid grayish white of our clouds, which we use here. We want to have two different colors instead of one solid white. So there is something going on here with a shady color. Let's make it bluish because the shady sides uh, will face a lot of the sky and therefore get a blue tint. And uh, let's assume the sun is yellowish on the horizon. So I chose a yellow color for the for the lit sides of our clouds. Now we are going to use a, some sort of factor uh, of the noise maps and of course you would have already suggested that we are going to use difference between an offset going to use the difference between an offset um, noise texture and original noise texture. And you see that one side of our clouds uh, get a lighter uh, impression. Uh, this is working on the global x-axis, which we calculated here. It's a kind of constant with our global space coordinates. So the more we look into the x-direction, um, the more we will see uh, the sun lighting or the, the shaded sides of our clouds and the more we look in the opposite direction uh, the more of the bright sides we'll see. Uh, of course additionally you can uh, shift both of those clouds by using another vector map add node. So if I change the coordinates here, you see that all the clouds are moving constant. I can exaggerate that value to 100 and it still looks good. That was not the case with the uh, set component running in the scale of our noise texture with our first approach we did in the beginning. So I hope you see the benefit. Of course, you can stack a lot of clouds uh, above each other. Uh, I would use the, the set coordinate of this combined XYZ node in order to somehow drive the height of the clouds that they change their shape slightly um, as you rise the level. And you could, yeah, you could just to simulate uh, the height, the altitude of your clouds. You can change the set factor going in, in here into the division. So this could be one and the same. You could, uh, would I add something here or multiply? I would multiply this value. Multiply. I think 
think that should work. It looks like I'm, I'm raising the clouds now. So if I use lower values as a multiplication or as a, as a factor for the multiplication, uh, the lower values will raise the altitude and higher values will increase the altitude. So it looks like here we're very close to the clouds. And that way you could make different, uh, sh different layers of clouds and introduce a very, very complex shading. And um, yeah, I did so in my own product for, uh, for Blender Market, uh, where I'm selling skies. It's called Animate Skies, where also you could uh, let the cloud, the sky, follow the movement of your camera, which you see down here with the geometry of the landscape. Uh, the more you move the camera, the more uh, you see the movement of the sky as well. And here is some example of, of a stack of different clouds. All of them are shaded and you have some wind direction, some sun direction. So there is a very complex and advanced setup, which you could buy if you want to, but I hope uh, you just learn some stuff in Blender as well for the noting, which is kind of my domain. And if you liked it, then uh, check out my products on Blender Market. Recently I made some uh, tree, some low poly trees, which are very helpful. Uh, they're kind of shading nice with a very good uh, shadow resemblance and very, very efficient on geometry. So there is a low poly shape around the trees and very high detailed textures to resemble uh, a detailed structured tree. You can imagine that scenes for forests and everything are very easy to do with this. However, I hope you have learned something and uh, you have uh, a lot of fun noting in Blender um, and seizing its open noting structure uh, and if you have any questions just feel free and comment below this video or hit me uh, a message on Blender Market and that's it happy blending bye